This is WBBM FM. No, it's not. <laughs> It'd be B96. No. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Uh, so here we are. We're in Palatine. And if you could smell a podcast, what you would smell? Well, you'd smell the manly musk of myself and Greg, the owner of Chicago Culinary Kitchen. But you'd also smell the smell of Chicago Culinary Kitchen, the most amazing barbecue meadery in in the state and in the back seat, I have two representatives of the Chicago Outfit Roller Derby. That is on this week's episode, which is lovingly brought to us this week by our friends at Boost Mobile. The phone I'm using uh, my entire life is courtesy of the Boost Mobile network. Boostmobile.com or go visit them at one of the proverbial brick and mortars. Everybody ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. It's Car Con Carne. Let's eat in the car. And now here's the star of our show, James Van Ostel. Okay, we're at Chicago Culinary Kitchen in Palatine, uh, which is right off Northwest Highway in Quinton. In Quinton, that's right. Uh, this place is amazing. I had my windows down as I rolled in. I could literally smell it as I pulled in off Quentin in the back seat. So this is I'm, this is my first time here. I'm assuming that Smashly Pumpkins from the Chicago Outfit and Destroya Montoya from the Chicago Outfit, this is your first time here as well, right? It is. First time. All right. So as Greg, the owner, is sitting here, describe what you thought when you first walked in the place. I should have been coming here way <laughs> earlier than today. It's like she awesome. said, Flintstone size meat. It's enormous it looks so good yes. well, for, well for me when i walked in it's the vibe of the place i i it was loud rock and roll i think i was listening to pantera when i walked in the door uh it, just the the skulls and the meat and the beer the anti-vegetable attitude when i walked in the door and the portions there's there no such thing as portion control at this place is there i don't know what that is right <laughs> <laughs> well what was that thing as we were walking out to do this podcast in the car greg i saw I, I guess technically it's a sandwich because it was on a bun, but there was no way it could be eaten like a sandwich. That was the El Jefe. So the it's, boss. It's the Trinity, yeah. So it has so, uh, it has Texas sausage on it, it has pulled pork, and it also has beef brisket on there and two pickles. Now, an ordinary barbecue place might put that all in a tray. You put it all in a bun. We do, because that would be our only, let's say, uh, variety of everything. We, everything is a la carte. We don't, we don't have any, like, let's say specials when it comes to that like can i get you know a sampler platter we don't have that this is just not how texas does it all right so now for the chicago outfit players in the back this place seems like a place that is appropriate for a roller derby team to come visit right totally oh of yeah. course we'd fit right in mm -hmm. yeah tattoos edgy yeah yeah you Everything. gotta be inked up i'm not um but it's, <laughs> it's mainly because i'm hairy <laughs> you do look very hairy. <laughs> thank you. You've got a nice beard. Oh, I do. I, thank you. Thank yeah. you for noticing. Chicks Smashly <laughs> Chicks dig beards. Thank you, Smashly Pumpkins. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mentioned this to Smashly Pumpkins before. One of my favorite things about roller derby, and Greg, we were talking about this too, is the names that derby players have. I, I love mean, it. Destroya Montoya is behind me. <laughs> if I were to join a roller derby team, my name would be Mamie Schumer. <laughs> If like, if I was in porn, my name would be Blue Diamond Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Right? Like that. It's better than Blue Ferrigno, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like your alter ego. You get it, Viagra, it's kind of like yeah. a Blue Diamond. It just works. So is there like a central database for roller derby names that you have to consult when you come? Like, I'm assuming Crush Limba is already taken. There, There is a list. I cannot remember the site that it's on, but they do keep yes. a list so people don't cross over, especially in the same leagues. I mean, every league will let you know, like, that name's taken, that number's taken. You get to pick your name and your number. Yeah, you so. can enter the name into the database and search to see if your name's available across, across the country. So, so just register it, and then you're good. So, Destroya and Smashly, I, I'm glad you're here at Chicago Culinary Kitchen. I, Greg, one of the first things he said, I love roller, roller skating. Like, yeah. this is an appropriate uh, convergence you of could people probably, today. We could, if we just swept the gravel outside, we, we got a circle out here. We guys can... Oh, we could totally come skate out here. Oh, yeah. Right? We, we, love, we love being able to come places where we can actually put our <laughs> skates on and market and cross-market people and promote everything so uh let's just consider that done right now done awesome deal. we can just set dates yeah we can just throw roller. some elbows yeah all right so 
here's I I don't know. Maybe you do, Greg. How how do the rules work in roller derby? Do you know? I honestly don't know. I just know they go around in a circle and people fall down and stuff like that. And that that's my general people, understanding. I think it's kind of like WWF, but on wheels in a way. And real. Yeah, I don't know how Unscripted. they score either. I don't know what a scoring is. All right, so with that, the the two dudes in the front have no idea. We throw it to the Chicago outfit in the back seat. How does roller derby work? Roller derby works. Well, basically, most people know the girl with the star on her helmet. That's the jammer. So if you're familiar with roller derby or not even familiar, you see the picture of the girl, a star in her helmet, that is the jammer, and she is the only one on the team allowed to score. So you're going to have five girls on the track, and there's going to be four blockers. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Is this our oh. Oh. I see the food coming. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're having food brought to the car. Show us what, Greg, you have to explain what's what's walking in here. We're bringing a dry-aged, this is about 38 days, 40-day uh, mm. dry-aged, which we do in-house. This is a 40-ounce tomahawk, uh, certified Angus beef. This is a t- uh, tomahawk. I, I can't even, we'll see this. This is gigantic. This is like a Flintstone steak. Oh, yeah. So are we passing that in? What yeah, are we doing gonna, with this? I'm going to get each one and pass them back. Sweet. Wait, oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait. There's more than one. Oh, yeah. Well, there's one for everybody. How can you have <laughs> only one? What kind of monsters <laughs> do you think we are? <laughs> what? Holy. <laughs> this is the steak that was just brought into my car. Oh, my goodness. Dry aged. It comes with a... I'll, the, t- I'll throw you my platter. Yeah. Here. <laughs> we pass Trainier. this back to Smashly Pumpkins and destroy them on Toya. <laughs> This is happening right now in Palatine. <laughs> this is ginormous. Oh That's what this she is said. This is the biggest piece of meat I've ever seen. Yeah. Ever. 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 Sorry, guys. This is going to be so easy to eat in my car, too. Right. The steak literally just knocked down the camera. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This. Thank you. Yep. I want curbside steak service this. every day now. We could, hey, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would be. I, seriously. It, Greg, this is... Oh, and it's just dripping with goodness. It is. It's so juicy. Wait. Now, we don't have silverware, do we? No. You're not. Silverware's... We're not going to eat. So you just eat it like a Flintstone. <laughs> I, I think I had nightmares about eating food like this on camera. And now it's... Oh. <laughs> I... Greg. Oh, That's boy. Really oh, good. my goodness. It's amazing. All right, ladies of the Chicago outfit, mm. you're, you're digging this? It's I awesome. This. I have gum in my mouth. Hang on, Greg. Dude, look how juicy it is. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I saw someone in the restaurant eating one. I mean, these are cooked like to a perfect medium rare. Do you even ask people how they want their steak cooked? No. It comes medium rare. As they all should. <laughs> There's one place in Texas we went to. If you ask your steak to be cooked any other way, they charge you five dollars more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Greg, I don't know. I'm doing this on camera. Here we go. Yabba dabba, dude. <laughs> Right? Mm hmm. I don't know where to start. It's so big. <laughs> the sweetness of this steak. Oh my god, the flavor is so profound. It is perfect. It's that age, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, explain aging. For people, we all hear about you know dry aging and aging well, steak. Explain how that process works and why. There's two different thing. types of aging. So yeah. there's wet age and there's dry age. So mm-hmm. the dry age is I feel the dry age is much better than wet aging. So the dry age basically we take we'll take a subprimal. Um, in this case it's a long bone export. So there's seven of these on the rack and it's one giant um, it looks like a, a roast, right? And we take that whole thing we put into a especially uh, basically a refrigerator, but it's set we have our temperature set to a certain degree. There's also extra fans in there and then we have salt blocks as well. So what's that going to do is it, it's going to um, dry that meat out just on the outside, and then everything is going to start to get condensed on the inside then. And as that is starting to get condensed, it's going to get it's going to get softer and softer on the inside and uh-huh. actually be more tender as well. Literally, after about 40 days, you could just take your finger and poke it through the entire steak. Key behind this is we're trying to take the pomp and circumstance out of going to have a good steak somewhere. So... Just because you want to go have a delicious steak, like literally you would have to go put a suit, put a tie on, put a skirt and heels on, you know, not me personally, but... Although uh, I bet you look great. You've got yeah, the legs. Sometimes You've I do the legs. dress, uh-huh. you know. Um, I wonder if I could come in and do the roller derby with like a wig on. Yeah, you could. You could. Right? Mm-hmm. 
There's a men's roller derby league too, so. Yeah, but I would like to be kind of like a cross dresser one though. <laughs> I just come you in. fit right in. Right? <laughs> um, like my name could be like Danny. I don't know. I'll think of that. Anyway, um, but we try to take the pomp and circumstance out of getting a delicious steak. Uh, where you don't There's have, no pump going on right now. Right, you don't have to dress here. up. Got a lot Here of circumstance. Is, you want to wear heels. I mean, excuse me. You want to wear flip flops and come in in shorts. You're you're ready to roll. Mm-hmm. So it's never a problem with that. Oh my God! It's got a nice blast of salt, and this meat couldn't be more tender and sweet. The salt is one of the key parts. This is mm-hmm. this is a flake salt we use on here. It's a finishing salt. Mm-hmm. And it makes a really delicious um, top on it. Oh, my God. So, do you even, like, do sides for something like this? Who has room for a side? We used to. Um, we would do a potato with it or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we kind of made it like a regular steakhouse where if there is something, it's a la carte. Right. So, this way we could lower the price on that because this was, we had this at $100. And it is well worth, I mean, you go to any steak place. Yeah, yeah. You would definitely pay $100 for this yeah. steak. Agreed. For sure. Without a problem. Can I, can I ask what you charge? I think this is 69 now. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, I, so right. worth it. We're all going to yeah. hug Greg when we leave the <laughs> yes. car, right? We're You're all, my new best friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you could take 20, if you have some stuck in your tooth, you could take it out and save it for later. <laughs> like here's fifty cents. How many ounces are I've just these been, usually? Just been told my 40, pretty face so. can't be seen. There we go. Yeah. These are forty ounces, right? These are forty ounces. Wow. These are all hand cut here too, so we cut them all. So I'm already preparing my my story for when I get home. Why are you going right to bed? Well, I'm just, I'm just a little yeah, tired. I don't want to explain that I had a forty <laughs> ounce steak at you right? have one o'clock in the afternoon. You have the meat sweats. Yeah, uh huh. Mm-hmm. I don't have to eat for like two days now. Yeah, I will be making dinner. Right? You could feed a lot of people with this bad boy. I won't be making it to practice tonight. Uh, Let's talk about some of the other stuff on your menu. So we have about over 130 craft beers. When we talk about beer, we should probably get my wife in here to talk about Mm -hmm. beer. Um, Christina's going for her Cicerone, which is basically the, um, it is just like a sommelier, but for beer instead. And there's not many females, of course, that have a Cicerone. Well, and when Smashley and Destroya walked in, she said, what kind of beer do you like? And she basically, like, curated their beer choices. And how, how, what was the result? Do you like what you got? I love it. Yeah, we both it's got it. It's a pomegranate cider. Yeah. She made a good call? Yes, very, very good. good. Oh, my very God. Very good. All right, so uh, besides it's the beer. Shift maker. And the El Jefe. What, I see bread Whoa. pudding on the menu. I yep. see 18-hour pit beans, which sounds very exciting to me. Well, lastly about the beer, that we oh, don't have really any... So if you're coming here and look for Coors Light or a Miller product or even Pepsi product or Coke, we don't have any of that here. So you do craft soda? Yeah, for... we do all craft soda. That's all we do. I love it. Same with the beer. It, if it's small town, if it's a big name, we won't carry it at all. Uh, what else is on the menu? Um, you know, our menu stays the same. It really comprises of just 12 different items. That's it, you know. Um Brisket, pastrami, pulled pork, spare ribs, back alley. The back alley is really good, too. So we take the same rib, and we put this hot honey on it. Ooh. And then we put a duca on top of that. You put what? A duca. A duca is basically like a Middle Eastern type of uh, nut mixture. It's got it's got pistachios, um, some, some seeds, uh, fennel, uh, pumpkin seeds, um, Would you call them Smashly pumpkin seeds? Yeah, that's, good. that's a good one. Like that. mm-hmm. So we have that. Then we have our effing and mac and cheese because it, it has uh, Fleming Hot Cheetos crushed on top of it. <laughs> um, we have our pit beans, um, escuetes, which is our Mexican street corn, but in a cup. Oh, so good. Um, so that's with yeah. like the cotilla cheese it. and all that? Yeah, so yeah, you like cheese escuetes is, in, is off of the... Uh, off of the cob and elotes is on mm-hmm. the cob. We got to get lessened for that. <laughs> then we have our pig candy, which is basically just um, bacon that is smoked with brown sugar and a little bit of cayenne on it um, and some natural sugar as well. And then we have our 32 ounce McClure's Bloody Mary. 32 Whoa. ounce? Yeah, it's giant. It's it comes a couple of those in here. Yeah, two <laughs> syringes of. One's Akavit and one is vodka. Akavit is 
Swedish liqueur. It is a Danish liqueur. Danish. And it's more like a Danish vodka than mm-hmm. it is a liqueur. Um, it's got a, like a flavor of... Uh, the real one should have a flavor of like caraway seeds, mm-hmm. and that's why we use it because the caraway would work really well with a tomato with a tomato base. I think the first time I ever said skull after doing a shot was after drinking Akavit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and with that, true true Akavit has to go on a ship in a barrel to actually be called Akavit. Okay, when did you start? When did this place open, and what precipitated its birth, so to speak? We started in the garage uh, in the basement. Excuse me, not the basement. Like we, started, home, we started in the backyard. Like you know, home smoking? Yep. And people just started finding their way over to the house, and they all wanted to come over and hang out. So one day um, we started. We have another, and Christina was into it too? Like Yeah. We shared have, love? We have another brand called Rock and Rodizio, which we do with churrascos. And what's a churrasco is, like, have you ever been to Fogo de Chao or Texas, mm-hmm. Brazil? So... We come out, we have these three co- mobile cookers that does that. We had them shipped in from Brazil. So we do that right, right live right on site for you. It's, it's pretty damn cool. And then so we just had, this is the commissary then. So one thing led to another. I'm like, hey, you know, this, the front of the space is just empty. Why don't we do, you know, what we always love doing is Texas barbecue. Mm-hmm. I don't know. One thing led to another. And I guess here we are today. I'm covered in blood and goodness. Yeah. This is magnificent. How are you girls holding up back there? I am. I'm like just. I'm stuck. Are you a mess? Getting I'm a mess. There. <laughs> I'm getting to the point where like I'm eating just for for taste because it's so good. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be in pain, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I have napkins in here somewhere, which I will be busting out shortly. I can get some. Yeah, I'm covered in blood, and the sweatshirt's going to have to go a couple around. rounds Look at that. in the wash. Look at. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. A perfect medium rare, like just. This is meat poetry happening right here. So it it's cooked over live live charcoal too, live wood. I took a quick video of it because it, yeah. it was a thing of beauty to behold. It's not wrong to say there's nothing else like this out here, right? No, I've eaten a good portion of this. Not at all. Just Tell me about the response because people line up for this. They do. Like today, we had about 40, 50 people in line. First person in line gets a free beer. It's worth it. That's where the roller derby girls could come in, right? So we could just check some people while they're in line. Absolutely. <laughs> they try Keep to them cut. in order. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey. Yep. Stay in your line. And... Right? Even through it. That would be awesome. I feel the buzz around this place. Yeah. It's 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 for real. It's, you know, it's not forced, you know, and that's what I feel some places that, I mean, it's not an Applebee's where they have all that swag and stuff. I've made everything in that place. I made myself. Um, you know, it's not, it's not forced that, mm-hmm. you know all the signage and any kind of swag that's in there, you know, that's just what I felt doing for that day. All right, so I'm going to rest this on my dash as I go on a noble hunt. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. All that juice is going to be in one corner of that plate. Yes. There's so much juice on the platter. It's It's, so good. It's amazing. Now, Greg, you're barely eating while I'm making you talk. No, I just ate two not too long ago, so. God. (laughs) I, I'm, I'm trying to, like, concentrate as, I mean, I, I don't have steak as often as I, I want to, let alone steak that is that effing good. So that top part here, what you see here, this piece that's coming off right here, this is the, ah. this is called the top spinellus, yeah, really? and that's the, uh, yeah. that is the candy of the whole thing right there. Oh, my God. The, the, the aging the meat makes such a difference. It makes a huge difference. It really does. Oh my gosh. All right. So I should mention, I'm assuming we're still on here, right? Yeah, we're still on here. Uh, you open, you don't serve, this isn't a place you can just pop into on Tuesday night. You're open Saturday and Sunday only. It's at 11 till about 2 o'clock or until we sell out. Which is a very Texas thing. It is. And this way, another thing, barbecue is very hard to hold, you know, uh, when it comes to like things being cooked. So we time everything accordingly. So what you're eating is the freshest possible food. So it's not something that's been reheld or recooked yeah. along the way. So what you're getting was just made. It was made today, basically, or the brisket was made yesterday for today, you know, with the cook time. So that's my whole our whole principle behind it that way, so that we serve you the freshest food possible, and it's just not, you know, like a puppy mill. Thank <laughs> goodness for so many reasons uh, that it's not like a puppy mill. Yeah. Uh, this food was fantastic. I mean. And I do like the casualness of it. I mean, I don't want to throw on khakis to eat a steak. 
I want to listen to Pantera as I'm doing it. And that's what you would have to do then. You mm-hmm. know, you would have to... Especially, I mean, this is the same steak that you would get at a top, you know, any top restaurant. And I, I mean, it's cooked... Per- I, I, I can't guarantee that every steakhouse will cook a steak as perfectly as the steak I just had. Yeah, and everybody, and there was four of them that just came out. Yeah, I mean, I watch you, you know, firing those up in the back. And I have a hard time just at home getting my steak to a perfect temperature. Well, there's a couple different ways that we would do it. You know, I noticed that there's the method of, you know, only turning it four times, let's say, right? You get mm-hmm. the grill marks on there. If you notice, there is no grill marks on this particular steak. Right. So this way we let the steak cook, you know, top to bottom, top to bottom, and let that heat go through it. And I think that's the best way, you know, to get a really even sear on the whole thing that way. All right, should we get Christina in here? Yeah, let's get her in You want her to jump in the back seat? Are you, are you done talking to us? you want to hang out? Um, well, let's put her in here so she feels, because she's just as much of an owner as Absolutely. I Absolutely. Well, see, girls? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, you know. You couldn't do it without her. Well, this is an us thing. We started yeah. this. I mean, we're a team, you know. That's it. She's my best friend and vice versa. I'm going to get teary-eyed. Aww. You're going to get teary That's sweet. See, I know. You're big, teddy you big bear. guys. You big yeah. guys are real softies. <laughs> like uh, dude, ever... it's not me. You have to. If I come in, then it's the Incredible Hulk, and everything's gonna go to shit. It's her you got to worry about. Yeah, I think I think she'd take you easily. <laughs> She's the one. I think that... I'd be more scared of her than you. Yeah, yeah. She definitely we, fit in with Derby. We come in at two different heavies, though. You know, it's like we take care of certain things. I'm like, okay, you take care of this now. That's your job. I'll do this part. You gotta have a good teammate to work with. You do. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go get her. All right, amazing. Oh, wait. Come on in. I'm nervous. I'm like, what did you, you guys talk about? All right, careful, for the, careful getting in. Thank you, Christina. No problem. Uh, do you mind if I put some of this on Facebook Live? <laughs> yeah. No, go ahead. I completely messed up. This is Everything delicious. Works? Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so good. It smells very meaty in here. Yes. I, I'm sure I mean, I'm sure you go home smelling like <gasps> Yeah. Every it's just day. Is that your, like, your new perfume is just meat? <laughs> I don't even bother putting on perfume when I come into the kitchen because I know it's like just gonna, it, yeah. It's, it, you know, Look, guys, dig that. So your husband will probably loves that. He's probably like, oh, you smell uh-huh. delicious. <laughs> like literally. It's gonna be one of those days. See, I just keep eating because it's so funny. Okay, uh, here we are. That's Christina. She also uh, is an owner of Chicago Culinary Kitchen. We just talked to Greg. We just uh, your husband brought in these steaks that are big hoss that we big hoss. killed a lot of. Good work. <laughs> you're putting a heart on that. Yeah, yeah. I just can't yeah, you're stop. doing pretty good. <laughs> so good. Those steaks are uh, the size of a, a human torso. Those. Oh, yeah. That's our 40-ounce, 30-day dry-aged, 40-ounce, 30-day dry-aged ribeye uh, tomahawk. It was delicious. I'm it glad was. you enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, how often are you eating steak? Like, There's nary a vegetable to be found in there, is there? We do have a ski taste, but it is packed with cheese and butter and mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. It's flavor. As, as they flavor. should be. And love. All right, so when you when you weren't here, when we were eating the steak, I'm, I'm covered in you know just blood and I can fat. smell it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I am like, Come here. <laughs> I, I am like something out of the Green Inferno movie that Eli Roth did. Um, we were talking as we were eating about your beer background. Yes. Uh, tell us about that because, I mean, the girls from the Chicago outfit walked in. And you said, what kind of beer do you want? And they were kind of pointing you in a direction. You said, oh, we have this, this, and this. This one's pomegranate. And, like, you you nailed it for them. So you you have this almost supernatural beer skill. I have been studying beer um, for a while. I'm actually currently working on my uh, certified Cicerone. Mm -hmm. Um, I have my certified beer server, which a lot of breweries and big um, restaurants that have lots of taps require you to have just so you know the different styles of beer and what they taste like. So when somebody says, hey, I drink this or I like this, you can actually direct them to what style of beer, even if you maybe have not had that particular beer. Um, We actually, before we even got into the food stuff, we were looking to do a BOP, Brew on Premise. Or have a small brewery. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went to Siebel for their concise technological brewing course so I could brew beer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I have a lot of beer knowledge. Seems like a lot. To, <laughs> like, brewing your own seems almost like too competitive and too much. Did That's you, why we didn't do it. We yeah. started looking into it. And we, um, while I was going to Siebel um, for the technological brewing course, uh, we started visiting all the different breweries and everything. Uh, and they're very friendly. They're yeah. very open to p- other breweries. You know, it's like a, a brotherhood of breweries even though they're still kind of in competition with each other. Um, but they'd invite us in to do the tours and everything, tell us exactly the system they had, how they were doing stuff. Um, and we just kind of realized, you know what? 
it's really expensive to get into and like you said yeah. very competitive we're like we just want to drink great beer i'm like i you know i just want to make sure everyone knows great beer so i think i'll just learn great beer we'll open a restaurant and then we'll make sure we showcase their beer and like let everyone know that it's here and See, this, educate this, people this is where i was at as a kid I, I realized i couldn't play music i had no aptitude for playing an instrument i thought well, it'd just, just be much easier to be a disc jockey and play music, other people's music, and talk about it. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of the so path we took. I, I'm like what you are, just with music. Well, and it's great, because anytime I'm drinking beer somewhere, we can write it off as um, professional development. There That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Every day is professional development <laughs> it, day. It, 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 is, <laughs> it is every day. And the place has been open for 15 months? Uh, yes, just over here. We opened in March of 2016. Oh, look, it's Greg again. Hi, Hi baby. Hi. Hi. Do, you, do you not trust us with Christina. Are you, well, because I, I think there's going to be some, some roller derby action going on in the back here. Maybe. Yeah, because it should be mentioned, Smashly Pumpkins, Destroya Montoya from the Chicago Outfit Roller Derby Hi. are right there in the, in the back seat. Now, I mean, you ladies need some protein, right? You need to, you know, you're yeah. going to be Wait, kicking this, some this ass. This is it, man. We have three-hour yes. practices. Two yeah, we practices. have practice four times a week, uh, two to three hours. Usually they start about nine o'clock, so... Which is good because the only bad part is you go home and you're like so jacked up on adrenaline yes. that, you know, we're all up till about 2 a.m. Yep. So, but it's e- fun. Eating meat is their professional development. Yes. I, I agree with them. Total like, write off. You should be able to write this off. So, in, in the 15 months, tons of attention. Uh, you could feel the buzz. One of the things I started talking about with Greg, the vibe of this place is just so kick ass. It's Thank comfortable. You. It's, yes. it's rock and roll. It's meat. It is rock and roll. And it's meat, beer, and rock and roll. Yes, it is. And tattoos. And tattoos. Mm-hmm. And, tattoos. and we do Gorgeous have tattoos. a little disclaimer on the door because, you know, every once in a while you get that one person that walks in and they're kind of, you know, eyeball mad mugging all the tattoos. And, you know, wow, you know, this one guy came in actually. We had a private class going on. And oh, because you do classes during we the do, week. Yeah. yeah, we do private classes during the week and also public classes that are pre sold online. Um, beer and barbecue. It's basically a paired dinner. Um, and we tell That's you all cool. the secrets of how we make all of our barbecue, uh, a little bit of um, demo, um, and then obviously the education on beer and barbecue, and then you get to eat lots of food. Um, one time this gentleman came to the door, older gentleman, and I politely went outside and explained we had a private class going on, and was, you know, telling him, oh, you know, I was so excited. I'm like, you know, you can come back on the weekend, blah, blah, blah. The whole time he's mad mugging my arms, and I'm going, okay, okay. <laughs> and he told me he felt sorry for me, and I was what? like, What? What, what do you mean? What? what do you mean? I'm like, I have this great company. I've got barbecue. i got beer. What else could you want? And he, it was the tattoos. He didn't like the tattoos. So he said he wouldn't come back while I was there because he didn't like the tattoos. And I'm like, guess I guess you're not back. coming back. I own this place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Usually people love the tattoos. But yeah, that was the, so that's when the warning went up on the door. I told my husband. Did we had the chief that, of yeah. police in the back taking the class with us. Wait, it says, if you're oh, if you're offended by the following, by the following meat, oh. beer, tattoos, skulls, Rock and roll. This is not your kind of place. This is Perfect. not your kind well, of place. Well, it's our kind of place yes, for sure, then, because we love check, all that stuff. Check, check. Yeah, this, this is slam dunk for roller derby. I mean, it's everything. so excited to have you guys here. Today. Glad to you. come. I will we'll definitely be back. All right, so Destroy Montoya and Smashly Pumpkins. If Christina wanted to join the Chicago outfit, like, is, is, is it open to all who have an interest and an ability to mm-hmm. skate, or is it more. No, yeah, we have a boot camp, and we usually have the boot camp towards the fall. Um, and. I have girls that did boot camp when I did it, and they couldn't even skate. Like, had, could not skate at all. I skated my whole life. I did a class before derby. Um, I joined three years ago. I was 39 when I joined. So I'm 41 now, and there is all different ages. Yeah. I mean, we go from 18 to older than me. Um, all different, you know, orientations, all different pe- types of people, um, different backgrounds, different... Um, uh, what am I trying to think of? Ethnicities, like Eth- yeah, everything. Ethnicities yeah. and, you know, employment, just, it's across the board. Total mixed people. Yeah, and, I, and everybody's great. I just did the boot camp last October, and I hadn't skated for 20 years, and I picked up my skates, and I, it's like I remembered it yesterday, and then I did the boot camp for weeks, and then you try out for the team, and... Yep. And then you just keep on getting better and get scrimmage they ready. They teach you everything you need yeah. and they'll work with you and it's great. I mean, I, I live in the suburbs, so I drive all the way to Chicago. We practice at Fleetwood, which is on Harlem and Archer. Yeah. And we hold our bouts mm-hmm. at Windy City Fieldhouse. And um, I did the tryout at the end just because, well, hold up, I did the boot camp and I made it. And I'm like, you know what? The girls were awesome. I just clicked. Yes. So it is well worth the drive it's for me like for a practice. It's it a is. great group of women. You know, and not just the outfit, just yeah. the derby community in general. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if something happens um, to somebody on another team or whatever, they'll put it out there on Facebook and social media. And we've donated to people who've, you know, lost their homes in fires and people who've had their gear stolen out of their cars. It's just, 
the, the community is just great. I mean, you're not going to find a better group of people that are willing to support you and just be there. I mean, for everything. It's and, great. And while we're in uh, derby mode, your first match is when? Is it? Is it Our home opener is going to be May 5th. We've actually had a couple bouts. Um, we travel. We have Travel League. Mm -hmm. So we've had a couple bouts. Um, and this, follow, this coming weekend, our syndicate team, which is our top A team, charter team, they are going to be in K-Town um, for their first bout. And then our home opener is going to be May 5th at the Windy City Fieldhouse. Wait, where's K-Town? K-Town, you know, honestly, I wish I could tell you. Okay. I'm so <laughs> Google it. Everything I, I'm like nodding my Michigan. head. I, I don't know. If we just know it's K-Town. It I think so. Maybe I'm not Because I'm not on Possibly. the syndicate. I'm like, oh, I don't know where K-Town is. <laughs> but, um, K-Town to me is Kenosha, Wisconsin. But. <laughs> our home opener is going to be May 5th at Windy City Fieldhouse. And then all of our home bouts are the first weekend of every month. So it's going to be May, June, July, and August. We'll be at the Windy City Fieldhouse hosting. So we have two bouts um, during each uh, game. During, or during two games, I should say, during each bout. No, that doesn't yeah, make there's sense. Two, there's, there's two, two bouts. bouts during each home <laughs> game that we host. <laughs> Got it. But we have, um, there's. it's not just derby. I mean, it's very family oriented. We do have beer available. We have different food vendors that come in. We have craft vendors that come in. And we have raffles that we do. So it's a great experience. A lot of fun. We have a regular photographer that comes out, Nine Muses, and he has a photo booth so you can take pictures with your family, pictures with team members. That's cool. Yes. And it should also be noted, if you're offended by tattoos, maybe the Chicago outfit's not for you. You know what? Yes. If you're offended by tattoos, the derby isn't for you because you're going to find it everywhere. Every single person And if you're offended by tattoos tattoo. in this, in this day mean, and age, then you're going to have a hard time yeah. leaving your house. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> and that's what's great. The derby's just accepting of everything. So. All um, right. So uh, for more on the Chicago outfit, where do people go? Um, Facebook? You go to Facebook. You can go to our website, ChicagoOutfit.com. Um, is it Instagram, yeah. Instagram, Instagram outfit. Chicago outfit? Yeah, and if you Google the Chicago outfit, I'll tell you right now. Make sure you Google the Chicago outfit roller, roller derby, derby. Yes. because if you Google the Chicago <laughs> outfit, the first thing you're gonna get is all the gangsters. Yeah, which is yes. fine with us because <laughs> that's where our logo is is uh, similar to the Godfather yep. but with skates. Uh -huh. um, but just skates. when you Google it, make sure you Google the Chicago outfit roller derby. And if you go on our website, you'll find profiles of all of the skaters. You'll have our pictures, our bios, a little bit about us all. So. It's great. They do a great job with marketing us and, and keeping us um, in the public eye. Because I, I, I want to reserve Mamie Schumer now. Like no one, no one can have that. That's mine. Go on there, market. I, I am Mamie Schumer for the uh, roller derby. Yeah, yeah. Go on there and put in the database. We do. We do a lot of a lot of promotion and marketing because it, the league is team run. We raise all the money. We're a nonprofit. We, we we have to raise all the money to put on all of our bouts run all of our our um, fundraisers that we do. So it is all league run. So everything that that the Chicago outfit does is done by the team. So, how hard is the boot camp and tryouts? Because I have it's thought not, about this. It's, it's not. Wait, wait, look at this. It's, okay. a <laughs> like, hmm. it's five weeks and it's three hours. Okay. On, it's they used to do it on Monday nights. So I'm not sure. When I did it, it was three hours, five Mondays in a row, and you didn't even have to go to every single one. But definitely, I mean, try to because you get the most experience out of it. Right. But you really just need to have skates. Um, you have to have your essential Wait, gear, yeah. which is, is helmet. Skates, or can you do rollerblades? Or is it definitely roller just skates? It's, it's okay. quads. Yeah, it's quads. Yeah. Roller okay. skates, quads. Awesome. Not, the, not the boots, the, the short speed skates. You have to have a helmet, mouth guard, wrist guard, elbow pads, and knee pads. That's required equipment for any derby player, even during practice. Safety first. Safety yeah. first, Safety exactly. First. So, awesome. And then your skates. And we do try and provide, like a lot of us have you know older gear, so we'll try and have that available. Um, for people, oh, that's people cool. to use yeah yeah they take you step by step of uh, every skill like learning to skate backwards crossovers mm -hmm. they teach you every all the general skills um to make the team for roller derby so they're showing you everything so that because they want you to make the team and they want you to be part of the, of the team yeah for sure i mean how, how physical i mean how much pain do you do you walk away from a season with? I mean, I'm assuming you take a lot of bumps doing this. Oh yeah, you get yeah. Lots, of lots of bruises. I'm always bruised. Lots of bruises. I would have to say most of our injuries that I've since I've been on derby, most of the injuries I've seen happen have been at practices and scrimmages, just learning. Mm -hmm. um, I I myself have never bouted. I've done scrimmage. I've never bouted because I am a klutz and I've injured myself outside of derby. And then I was sick, and so breathing has been an issue for me. But I just keep at it. I mean, it's something that I would never give up. Right. Um, but yeah, you're you you're the next day you're sore. The two days later, there are practices where like when I first started, I dreaded having to go down the Lots stairs. Lots of Epsom salts. I'm yes. okay with <laughs> Lots sore of soaking, muscles yeah. and bruises. I just don't want to break a leg. We have we <laughs> actually have a great support system. Um, one of our our league has their own. Um, 
well, I think we're still looking for a chiropractor, but we have our acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. um, Frank, who comes to Wednesday practices, and he heals us and gives us great stuff to make us feel better. So, and, and never, <laughs> never uh, doubt the healing power of beer. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah. shower beers, shower beers after practice. <laughs> Those a lot, are the best. You see a lot of posts of you know girls hot shower with the shower beer. That's like a definite for or me. Or if you need an ice pack, you know, before you drink it, you just put it up. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> helps reduce swelling. And, and how many beers do you have in here? Uh, over 130 right now, and then four different ciders. That's like half the restaurant. I it mean, is in terms of space. I mean, that's. Well, you know, I want to make sure that we have something that appeals to everybody. Yeah. So I try to have at least one to two beers in every single style. And then um, my husband and I are very much hop heads. So the more hops, the more boozy the hops are, um, the better. So I think maybe one third of the beers we have are IPAs or double IPAs. This we had a triple choice. for a while. Evil Twin did Evil Three. Yeah. And it was a small badge. And whoever got, got it only got one case and it's gone. Like, you can't get it again. I should mention my car is always parked as I do car cone carney. So if you see perhaps a beverage in the back seat, know that this car is not moving. Um, not er drinking and driving. That's exactly Empty. right. We're parked Done. in front of the restaurant, so if we want another beer, we can just go in and get one. Exactly. It's all about strategy. <laughs> Never leave the source. Strategy in place. So the beers that you have here, can we get somewhere? Because this choice that you picked for us was awesome. So That was great. I yes. believe How about the Chicago can... Culinary Kitchen? That's a great place to find yes. it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come and, and eat, and then uh, we'll get you some more of that. They're drinking the pomegranate shilling. It's a mischief maker. Yes. It's a do you, very do you feel it's mischievous in the back seat? A perfect fit. <laughs> they look it's a fit for us back here. <laughs> all right. So the Chicago outfit, roller derby, uh, Cinco de Mayo. It, it all begins. Yes. Uh, go support them. If you're interested, the doing the boot camp, being part of it, you can find out more on the website. Chicago Culinary Kitchen is the place I want to die. Um, I... <laughs> I'd be fine ending everything there. <laughs> Don't know that would be for our business. No. Bad for business. No. <laughs> yeah, it's not implausible after that tomahawk steak, um, that which was magnificent. That, that seriously, that steak was just. I just guess I'm eating it. We're dry aging ourselves, and you know, 30, 35 days between that's when we decide to go ahead and, and carve them out, and then sell them as a special. I, I'm wet aging myself. It's <laughs> it's an ongoing concern. Uh, but man, the, the food here is so good. Uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. For course. the hospitality. Uh, the address again of Chicago Culinary Kitchen? 773 North Quentin Road, and that's Palatine, Illinois, 6007, or 6067. This is a meat oasis in the northwest suburbs. It's this is burbs. And beer. It's the and beer. And beer. Absolutely. Absolutely. All styles, stouts, and porters, too. But uh, this is a lifestyle. This is fun. This is relaxed. It's, it's what you do on the weekend. Yeah. Yes. This is not work. Uh, it's basically a three, four hour party. We come here and we hang out and we sling good food and, and eat it to ourselves. I always eat before we open. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. I, you know, I got to try the specials. Hell sure. yes. Yeah. All right. So, Destroya Montoya, Smashly Pumpkins from the Chicago Outfit. Thank you Christina for from us. Chicago Culinary Kitchen. Thank you all for doing this. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for watching on Facebook Live. Uh, this fully produced podcast, uh, which will involve some editing, uh, will be available in about a week or so. So keep an eye on caracolincarney.com, uh, sponsored by Boost Mobile. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.